Okay, after we have discussed the unit root, especially on the unit root side, now uh, we extend the unit root uh, estimation or, or unit root chapter into what we call as cointegration. So this is an extension from the uh from the from the unit root testing. All right. So and this chapter number no five is very much related to the beginning of a cointegration tests, especially which have been uh, uh, popularized by the uh, by by the two econometrician called uh, uh, by the name of uh, Robert Engel and Cliff Granger, and uh, basically both of them actually are the Nobel Prize uh, winner in economics in the year two thousand and three because of uh, such development in the idea of cointegration right so they are the uh, like the guru or the uh, uh, the most important person in uh, in terms of uh, uh, talking about cointegration and yeah they uh, they won the Nobel prize in 2003 robert engel and cliff granger because of that right and certainly granger uh, also famous with the method called Granger causality, which we use often uh, in to test the existence of causality uh, from one variable to the other variable. So he has uh, numbers of contribution, but his one of his biggest one is called integration because it's an extension from the unit root test from the uh, from the previous chapter of ADF uh, uh, idea of unit root. Uh, why we have to test the unit root and now we're moving forward to another uh, method which is the continuation for unit root all right so the like like i told you from unit root to continuation previous chapter talks talks about uh trended time series and, uh, where the time series actually have the trended mechanism where you ha can have a deterministic and stochastic trend right uh, which create a problem econometric due to superior regression we also discussed this in length uh, especially in in uh, chapter number three chapter number four so we discussed that and um so what um and most of it happens in the macroeconomics variable or model itself right we also learned that is uh is uh how i mean one way to resolve this problem is actually to difference the series success severe until stationary is achieved and then use this series for regression analysis uh, we call it uh, unit root test, right? So that's what uh, we've done. But unit root is an uh, is n is not an ideal solution. There are problem employing first difference, uh, first differences. Haha. <laughs> so now uh, we are more to discover what is the issue here, right? Uh, if the model is correctly specified. Uh, as the relationship between x and y, we differ. Uh, we difference both variables. Then implicitly, we also differencing the error process on the regression, producing non-invertible moving average error process that will present a serious estimation problem. Which actually, we 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 talk about the MA, right? The MA issue here, where, where everything are first difference too, right? Uh, this is one. The second part is that if we difference the variable. The model can no longer give a unique long run solution. It's no longer long run, it's already short run because you first difference it. Right? So first difference in other words that uh, mathematically in terms is a like a growth rate. Right? You estimate the growth rate of the variable. Right? Growth rate of the variable, basically. Right? That's what happened. But then again, if you do that uh, uh in, in in the correct manner then you always can use OLS, no problem, right? Uh, to, to estimate the first difference kind of uh, estimation, right? So um, related to number two and number one, using first difference also throw away the information the economic theory can provide in the form of equilibrium relationship uh, when expressed between uh, y and x, the original unit of y and x means that equilibrium, we talked about equilibrium, uh, equilibrium is long run. So when there is already first difference means that it's already you throw away all those information of the long run, right? Uh, it could be used carefully, yeah. Uh, and then, and uh, that is way one way to solve this issue. Angle and Granger, especially Granger, Granger nineteen eighty one actually, 
come up with the idea of core integration come into picture so what is that what is this method about what's the beauty of this method that makes them becoming the Nobel Prize winner right so so the basic uh, the basic idea behind core integration follows from the explanation of space regression which shows that if two variables are non-stationary then we can represent the error term as a combination of the two cumulated error process right uh, this although is called stochastic trend um, and then they will provide uh, another produce another non-stationary process right? however in the special case where x and y are related then they are expected to move together so that the two stochastic trend would be similar to each other and when combined together should be possible to find a combination of them which eliminate non-stationary means that the two variables are moving together let's let's see uh, like this uh, graph itself you see um, both of them from our naked eye when we look at this rather than look at the statistical uh, evidence we can always uh, prove to the point that both of them actually are non-stationary because they are uh, stochastic in that sense not deterministic they're moving up but they're moving up in 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 the direction and both of them actually moving together together it's like you move together you achieve equilibrium together you achieve a higher level of equilibrium together the the the, the idea of togetherness here is very important uh, they are clearly non-stationary but they seem to move together so this movement together, this there are something that binds them together. And this something is what we call in the special case as they are co-integrated. They are moving together. Right? Uh, the, uh, in other words, despite that individual variable might be non-stationary, it is possible for linear combination of non-stationary variable to be stationary or co-integrated. That's the idea of co-integration. So the two variables can have a long-run relationship between the uh, two variables. So if the variables are co-integrated, then there's no longer an idea of superior regression. So that's the solution for superior regression rather than just taking first difference. All right. So uh, the key point here is that if there is really genuine long-run relationship, although the variable will rise or go downwards over time, there's a common trend that link them together. They're common things uh, link them together and we call that uh, certainly long-run relationship, equilibrium or co-integration, right? Uh, a combination of X and Y, the residual is I0, uh, right? The two variable Y, uh, Y can be, I mean, yeah, in this sense, right? So moving to the next one. So here, see here the X and Y uh, is non-stationary, I1, and this error term can be I0, right? And then uh, X and Y are said to be co-integrated, right? So that's the basic idea of co-integration. And this was first introduced by Granger itself in 1981, and then uh, the famous ever article, uh, Engel and Granger, and then we move forward uh, and more after that or, or this method uh, and yeah you use this method also in the next chapter johansson you say this but this the method that uh that going to be introduced which is the frontier or the uh, beginning of co-integration anger granger uh, is is mostly a bivariate system yes you can they can estimate multivariate more than two variables but then again uh, we'll have some issue there later on. I'll show you what is the issue actually, right? This is from the uh, previous slide just now. Is if y and x are set to be co-integrated with order db, where a where b is uh, smaller than uh, d and smaller than zero, so it says to be uh, integrated of order db exists linear co a combination of this, and then the vector is called co-integrating vector okay so that's the idea again of co-integration again uh, how we going to know that to deal with this the possibility that non-stationary time series might cause a regression result to be superior 
So these, these are the steps. So first, uh, you have your model. Uh, this is what um, from Uniroot, uh, from the previous chapter of Uniroot. Then we test for non-stationarity. If the variable do not have Uniroot, then estimate an original unit, right? Uh, this is uh, using OLS, right? Or just OLS. If, uh, if the variable have uh, Uniroot means that they are non-stationary, then you test the residual uh, for uh, for co-integration using angle grandeur approach two steps approach right if the variable have unit root but are not co-integrate then the functional form must be in first different to estimate the equation uh, this is different from uh, steps number three where steps number three means that they don't have unit root means that they are stationary then you straight away go or less the sixth one is that you still use OLS, but then you use first difference for the OLS. All right. Uh, if the variable have unit root and are co-integrated, then estimate the equation in an original unit. Uh, this is this is another point of uh, moving forward from number um, from number four to number seven. All right. So again, this idea was coined back in nineteen ninety one. Uh, non stationary process concept of long run equilibrium, which is very much important in economics because in economics we always discuss about long run in the long run, in the long run, long term uh, impact, uh, short term impact, and so on. So, it's all can be answered inside this uh, uh, methodology, econom uh, econometric methodology, especially using the time series analysis. Right? So, how are we going to estimate angle Granger approach? Easy. Three steps to be considered, or actually, uh, uh, basically, how we how they doing going to do this, right? Um, we have three cases to, uh, to we have, uh, not three steps actually. It's actually only yeah, three steps, right? Um, three steps uh of doing this angle gradient approach. First one is that we, um, first step is to test for the order of integration. Okay, uh, so there are three cases if the order both are stationary I zero carry out the normal OLS variable are integrated of different order is possible to conclude that they are not co-integrated, right? If they are in the same order, then proceed to step number two. Only then you proceed with angle Granger approach. This this one the B steps is very important, very important for angle Granger, but not for Johansson. Later, you see in chapter number six. Not for Johansson, you see this test, but important for angle Granger core integration test. But this has been some issue in the literature says that all core integration methods should have in the same order. Uh, and then we have another method called ARDL who have improved on that part. Anyhow, we'll discuss on that uh, much later when we have some extra time on that, especially on ARDL. So then we estimate. Uh, after you have your uh, 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 to know that the variable either 1, 2 or 3 or A, B or C A, you go LS, B, you stop 3, I mean C then you proceed to step number 2 then estimate the long run relationship how, you can, how will you estimate it? All right, estimate the long run equilibrium uh, in the form of this obtain the residual uh, there is no condition residual obtain will be superior if co-integration uh, exist then or less is a super consistent estimator so means that the test for this thing test for the residual right the residual are non-stationary for example and then this is uh, residual are stationary um, and then the next steps is that we check for the order of integration of the uh, error term perform unit root on the residual how to do that right uh, you estimate you take out the residual and then test the residual whether it's stationary or not. Right, take, take, test unit root. <laughs> For this uh, previous chapter, we test the variable. Now we're testing stationarity for the residual. Okay. Um, surely that this, 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 um, this method called angle range in 1987 has some drawback, has some limitation. Uh, right. Um, some of the issue is being highlighted in the next and uh, next chapter. <clears throat> this does does not give the number of co-integrating vector in the case of more than two variable employed. 
Uh -huh. And then the test result are relied on two steps estimator. Hence, any error into the first step will be carried in the second step. So that's a limitation. All of these problems are resolved with the use of Johansson, which you're going to examine, uh, which you're going to use in the next chapter, right? So yet uh here the next the next the next few slides after this will be on the uh how we're going to test angle grandeur using e views right uh, so what you need to do here these are the steps uh for estimation in e views remember to check stationary t first right uh, chapter four then after that we move forward to uh, integrated same order then we move to the steps to continue from the previous slide just now uh, regress y on x and uh, repeat the ls for x and y make sure you save both residual and then you test okay so uh, i'll stop here and then i will continue with the e views uh, estimation video on angle grandeur in the next video thank you very much adios